just to start on a, on a general, um, I mean, the situation is pretty, pretty bleak, isn't it? I mean, some of the stats that you gave in your opening statement, 85% um, of Ireland's habitats are assessed are in unfavourable conservation status. 46% of habitats are reported to be in decline. Um, you say 60% of species li listed on the Habitats Directive are recorded as having favourable conservation status, but that presumably means that 40% have less than favourable, i.e. unfavourable conservation um, status. You also mentioned, and I think this could be taken two ways, that um, the assessment results are similar to the EU average. They're no surprise. That's their, but like, people could hear that and think, oh, sure, we're no worse than the rest of Europe. That's, <laughs> but actually, what that's telling us is that the biodiversity is very deep, it's very wide, and it's all across Europe. Is that the case? Thanks, Deputy. That wasn't the intention with the yeah. comment uh, at all. We, in, in the context of nature, the National Parks and Wildlife Service has no intention to be in the pack. We want to be ahead of the pack. Uh, it was, uh, I suppose, by way of international comparator. The, the stats that we gave, and we're not going to sugarcoat this, we, the state has not covered itself in glory in terms of its response to nature. There's no other way to put that. We simply haven't. And there have been many factors contributing to that, um, not least resource prioritization. Uh, I think we're in a situation now where resources are being prioritized uh, and growing for the National Parks and Wildlife Service. And we're trying to address um, you know, the, 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 the shortcomings of the past, if I can put it that diplomatically. Um, we're currently uh, in the middle of uh, an Article 17 process to, to look again at the habitats uh, and see what state they're in. We anticipate that there will be some improvement. Uh, I can't quite put a number on that because the next report is due in 2025, but we, we've made very significant interventions across the habitat network and in the context of, 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 of dealing with threatened species, uh, in the context of the kind of resource we can, we can, we can put into play. Um, and indeed, in the context of owning up to the shortcomings of the past. Um, so we're looking forward to the 2025 report. I hope we're back here reporting improvements in some of our habitats, uh, certainly network improvements. Uh, but Deputy, sorry, the intention certainly wasn't to say yeah. that uh, being less than middling is simply not good enough. We need to be ahead of the pack. Thanks a lot. Um, and just uh, in relation to that question of resource prioritisation, um, do you have enough funding and enough staff to properly protect habitats to do your job? I think any agency that would come into a committee and tell you they had enough resources and enough staff would not be telling you the truth. Well, uh, often they say that. Often they say, oh, it's kind of above our pay grade. We couldn't possibly comment. Uh, no, I, I feel mean, free to comment. I mean, we're, we're, we're here in the context of... <laughs> He's not given to... Thanks, Senator. Not stating it as it is. Yeah. I mean, we're here to engage on the, on, 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 on the National Biodiversity Action Plan and the, 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 the power of work put in by the Citizens' Assembly in relation to biodiversity. Um, our staffing has grown by 35% since 2020. Um, our funding has doubled since 2020. Uh, and we are back to 2008 levels of funding for the National Parks and Wildlife Service. There are almost two decades of added responsibility, mm -hmm. um, particularly in the on the international compliance side. We have a significantly bigger uh, network of designated uh, land to manage. Um, we are in the teeth of a biodiversity crisis. Uh, we are the first generation of NPWS officials to know that, and we are the last generation that can do anything about it and they bring you to your senses. Those kind of facts bring you to your senses very quickly. We have, in terms of the kind of growth trajectory that we are looking at, uh, we have the nature, uh, 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 nature restoration regulation coming at us. It was agreed at, at a trilogue last week. We've been in the vanguard of presenting Ireland's position on that and negotiating the outcomes. Um, these, this is, the, the nature, the, the Natura Directives 2.0. There's no other way to put that. This is a very, very serious intervention uh, by the EU and by the member states in the context of addressing the biodiversity crisis. Uh, that needs to be resourced. Um, and we, we are engaged uh, with our parent department and with, 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 with PAR and across government in the, in the context of what that means. We have undertaken uh, an international comparators report 
uh, in the context of the kind of scale of staffing that we need to address our current obligations and the obligations that are coming at us uh, in the context of nature restoration law and the, the, the uptick that's needed, Deputy, to be, to be honest, in the context of how we're doing on, on habitats and how we're doing on species. Uh, I, I'm not in a position to tell you what those numbers are at the moment because they're confidential, but I, I suffice to say that the tra trajectory of growth that we've seen in numbers and resources over the last number of years absolutely needs to be maintained over the next 10 years if we're to be in a position to respond to those challenges. Thanks a lot. Just finally, um, two questions. One, could you talk to me about wildlife crime, um, in particular fires uh, deliberately set by farmers which have a devastating impact? And we're not talking about tens of fires across the country, we're talking about hundreds. So the scale of it um, and the resourcing in terms of tackling it, why there isn't a specific wildlife uh, crime unit, and what penalties exist, um, and then if you have a chance just to talk about, you mentioned the new national park, that's obviously very welcome. I presume you're in favour of more national parks. Do you have a view in terms of Connor Pass and the opportunity of taking that as a national park and rewilding it? Okay, so let me start with the Connor Pass and work my way back, if that's okay. Um, there are high nature, uh, high areas of high nature value that come on the market quite often. We are always interested in areas of high nature value, um, but we do not do our negotiating um, in public, um, no more than we negotiated the, 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 the purchase of the Bruna Bonia. Uh, so suffice it to say, we're well aware of the Connor Pass, we're well aware of its nature value, it is designated, um, and naturally with, 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 with a number of other opportunities, we're, we're looking at that. Um, the, Working back up through, through the questions, uh, Deputy, and uh, you, you'll stop me if I forget one. I'm going to come back to the, to the first one. Not all fires are set by farmers. Not all fires are illegal. There is a burning season. Um, and many farmers undertake that burning very responsibly uh, and within the, within the law. Um, and the, the burning season is open uh, right now. Uh, there have been pressures in the past to extend that burning season. That hasn't happened. Uh, and nor do we favour, as NPWS, do we favour any extension of the burning season. We have, we apply a significant amount of resourcing to the monitoring uh, and deterring of illegal fires. Uh, and, and this year, for instance, we deployed air cover, we deployed um, drone cover, we deployed significant resources on the ground uh, during the, uh, the orange and red warnings that one gets around, they call it, it's called wildfire potential. We don't have naturally occurring wildfires, but it gets that name. And I believe that was a significant deterrent this year with the eyes in the sky, uh, our patrols out on the ground, uh, who you know, came upon a number of fires that were being illegally started. Um, and there will be prosecutions ensuing from that, and I can't go any further in that regard because there are active files um, in, in that respect. Um, if I can come back to the wildlife crime unit, everybody in the National Parks and Wildlife Service, in the, the same way as everybody in the, in the, in, in, in Agarda are responsible for addressing wildlife crime from me right across the organisation. Um, and I won't have time here to go into the anatomy of a crime, but I'd be very happy to, uh, on another occasion, to describe how NPWS responds to a report of a wildlife crime, whether it is illegal burning, or whether it is um, a, a hedge cutting, or out of season, or hedge destruction out of season, or whether it is badger baiting, or whatever. We have, um, we have protocols in place in terms of how the organisation reacts to those. Um, we've, again, looking at the metrics this year, we've had a very, very successful year this year uh, in, in terms of the number of prosecutions. But the number of successful prosecutions is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of the activities within NPWS to, um, to, to address wildlife crime. Uh, not all cases come to court because some are actually dealt with on the ground, on the spot, by the, interfer by the intervention rather, of, of our rangers, of our, of our district conservation staff, and so on and so forth. Um, and I, I could give some examples of those. 
But looking at the hard metrics, we would have a couple of hundred cases, of, um, active wildlife crime cases of varying degrees under review at any point in time. Uh, you may have picked up in the media recently, we've had some, I think, headline um, um, wins in the courts. I think the courts now recognise uh, that wildlife crime is a crime and needs to be treated and addressed uh, accordingly. And that's not me making a, a statement I shouldn't make about the court system, but I think it's been a learning process for, for everyone around the, the destruction of nature and its wider societal impact, um, no matter how local it is. Uh, we've had, I think, 55 successful prosecutions so far this year. Uh, I think we have another four due in court next week. Uh, and beneath all of that, as I said, there are a couple of hundred active files, some of which are dealt with by intervention locally, where the, the, um, the intervention is you have destroyed something or you have damaged something. You need to restore that. And that is often, often a swifter, uh, more exacting response than working through the court system. Um, and we, we, we would have quite a number of those um, uh, deputy. So I think I yeah, got most of the questions. You did. Thanks a lot. Thank you.